It's almost impossible to avoid politics when you're writing about Iran. So, um, you know, as much as we like to think that we can get around it, I think it's part of the fabric of I Iranian American experience is to sort of continually either voluntarily or involuntarily be conflated with the events um, taking place in Iran. But in a way, this story is an art to sort of undo the othering that has been done by propaganda, by politics, and, uh, and, and you know, uh, agendas. So if you can s tell through your stories, bring out the humanity and the common um, sort of universal um, feelings that people share all over the world, this is a, it, it makes a big deal. And, and I think good nonfiction, I came to realize being in Iran and looking at the things that get written, you know, good nonfiction can only get written in a democracy. Uh, and uh, it's hard to write good nonfiction in a place where censorship has such a stranglehold. I, I very strategically, when I collected the first anthology, I used the term Iranian American, and I had never seen it before. So. I think that it was, uh, it's a strategy sometimes both for publishing and it's also a strategy when you're, when you're trying to articulate a voice, sometimes it's important to, f to find a, some gimmick package. Um, and one of the things that I feel proud of is that even in using a term like Iranian American, it doesn't really say very much in terms of you know, that there's some universal experience or some homogenous experience. I'm actually interested in the way that um, that label can be unpacked and undermined by all the people using it. Um, and I think for, for me, it, w it came at a point of both pride and discovery, you know, that like I had been writing and thinking about Iran and Iranian literature when I was in graduate school and suddenly I met all these people who were either born in Iran but had lived most of their adulthood in the US or people like me who were born in the US but had some identification with their Iranian heritage and it seemed like a really good moment to actually employ that particularly because after the revolution a lot of Iranians were afraid to say the word Iran and they were using the word Persia so I think labels sometimes have strategic value, especially at a particular historical moment. And my hope is in that we will become friends with Iran and people will move back and forth. And those categories won't be necessary. But I think they've, they've, had, they've served a purpose. And so I think, um, you know, I won't completely dismiss it at this point. Hey. Iran is a very haunting presence. I think, I, I'm speaking for others, but I would say it's a very haunting presence, whether it's present, like for Salar, he goes back and forth, um, because there is no contact with it on a sort of regular basis. So in a way, there's a lot left to the imagination, positively and negatively. And when there's a lot left to the imagination, you know, there's kind of rich, rich ground for creativity.